Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So, a while ago, I checked out a rather cheap 50 watt amplifier called the PA50. Well, recently, the PA50 Plus has been released, and this is what I have here. Now, the first thing I noticed was that the display is larger than the previous model, making it easier to see, I guess. As well as the upgraded 1.3 OLED, the specification information details that improvements have been made to the thermal runaway management design, which states it should improve thermal stability compared to the original PA50. They also state that due to this new design, the IMD performance is improved, which should give a cleaner output. With the previous model, there were a few modifications floating around on the internet, which attempted to dampen the triggering of the inbuilt protection, which when overdriven or a high SWR, would emit a warning beep and shut off the amp to put itself into protection mode. Now, many felt that this was too sensitive on the original model, but the PA50 Plus states that this has been improved in this model. So in theory, there's no more need to do any modifications yourself. Now the specs for this amp is pretty similar to the original version, with a one to five watt input providing an output of around 40 to 55 watts, which covers 3.5 megahertz up to 28.5 megahertz. So that's 80 meters all the way up to 10 meters. Well, at least the SSB portion of the 10 meter band. It looks like it stopped short just before the FM portion. Now typical operating voltage should be around 13.8 volts, but using it on a 12 volt LiPo for portable use would also be sufficient. Current drain on max power is rated at less than 12 amps. Now this amp will trigger its protection if the output power goes above 56 watts or if the SWR goes above two. So make sure to use it with a well-tuned antenna and remember to keep those drive levels as low as possible. Now the protection will also kick in if the amplifier reaches a temperature of 60 degrees C. The front panel shows some rather useful information such as supply voltage, amplifier temperature, band selection, forward power and SWR. In fact, this amplifier can be put into pass-through mode or just simply turned off and then it can be used as a standalone power and SWR meter up to 150 watts. Now the rear accessory port is a 3.5 millimeter socket utilizing three connections. Now this is for PTT, a ground, and then a band control. Now the PA50 Plus can use the band data from either an ICOM radio or a Zygu radio, which you can choose within the amp using the function button. Now using a cable for PTT is optional as the PA50 Plus has RF sensing and it appears to work quite well. Well, it did when I was testing with SSB voice and I'll show you that shortly. Now various functions can be set using the function button, depending on the amount of times you press it. Now all of this information is listed in the user's manual. One of the options is to turn off protection or put it into unlimited mode as they call it in the manual. Now this disables the RF output limit of 56 watts. So just use this with extreme caution. In fact, if you do use this mode, then the warranty will be voided. So that's a rather bold statement, which suggests they believe their built-in protection system works as it should. So in my recommendations, I would suggest just to leave it turned on. Now output power on all bands tested near the specified value. So I won't bore you with going through each band. I did perform a QSO using my Hermes Light 2, which has a max output power of around five watts. Now using the driver slider with an SDR console, I had to bring the power down otherwise the alarm would trip. Now this indicates to me that to obtain full power, the amp takes a little less than five watts to drive it fully. Now you'll notice this in the following QSO on the first over. The alarm triggered just as I was handing it over to the person that I was talking to. T4SZD calling CQ, CQ 140 meters. CQ 140 from Golf 4 Sierra Zulu Delta, over. Uh, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Okay, uh, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Yeah, good morning, old man. Thanks for the call. Uh, my name's Brian, Boston Radio, Italy, America, Norway. Name's Brian, and I'm located about six miles from Durham, uh, Durham City. So, uh, how did I 
that signal, you're about a five by eight, and I have about an S9 noise level, so uh, I don't know if you're getting a lot of noise. Uh, we're going through a storm at the minute, we've got a, it's absolutely bucketing down with rain, and uh, we've, got a, we've got a 30 mile an hour wind blowing at the moment. So anyway, how's things with you? M0 DQW, G4SZ, day over. Uh, yeah, G4SZDM0 DQW. Yeah, there's uh, quite a lot of heavy QSB t today. Uh, quite a lot of heavy QSB on uh, on 40. So uh, you you peaked up to about five and seven, five and eight, and then went down to about a five and three, um, back down to about a five and three. But uh, yeah, at the moment it's sunny here. It's sunny, but it's extremely windy. Uh, my uh, my Enfid half wave antenna is uh, is is literally. Um, flapping around in the wind <laughs> all over the place so it's not particularly uh, not particularly great at the moment um, but uh, anyway hopefully you've got all of the QSO all of my uh, over uh, like I said there was quite a lot of QSB on your last over but uh, I'll put it back to you the name here is Matt by the way I'm not sure if I mentioned uh, but the name's Matt Mike Alpha Tango uh, microphone back to you there Brian G4 S Z D M 0 D yeah. yeah, okay, I'm at, okay, I'm at fine, M0, D, D, Q, W, G4, I said D. Yeah, well, do you know what, man, I didn't see any QSB on your signal when you came back to me, because you, you were peaking up to a nine. Uh, but then, uh, like, uh, like, uh, like I did with you there, you, you sort of dropped of down to about a five and four. Uh, or have we, we lost propagation. M0, D, Q, W, G4, I said D, over. Uh, yeah, G4SZDM0 DQW. Yeah, 100% copy there, Brian. 100%. It was a lovely 5.9 then. 5.9 uh, solid. Uh, no QSB at all on that last over, uh, which was quite nice. Um, well, the radio I'm using here, it's a Hermes Light, little small 5 watt SDR radio. And uh, this morning I'm just uh, testing out a, a little 50 watt amplifier. Uh, called a micro PA50 plus one of these kind of Chinese cheap amplifiers. Um, it's, it, now, I'm not sure what was going on with the SWR on that Nissi meter during my transmissions, but it looked like it was jumping up really high, indicating a possible fault with my antenna. Now, at the time of transmitting, it was quite windy, making the wire antenna fly around, but I think I need to go check just to be safe. Weirdly enough, the SWR on the amp was always lower than 1.5, so maybe there is a fault with the meter instead. Now, to ensure my signal is clean, I performed a test transmission and listened to myself via the Hack Green Web SDR, which is a good few miles away from me here. Now, this is what I sounded like using the same setup as before. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is uh, M0 DQW testing, M0 DQW testing, M0 DQW testing, audio 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over. Now for those interested in seeing the internals of this amp, then here it is. To me, it looks pretty well built. Of course, it still has that hobbyist vibe due to the case being used, and it's certainly not a top-tier production. But it works, and it works quite well. Underneath the main board, specifically under the RF transistors, there's a solid block of aluminium, which the RF transistors are actually mounted to. Now this obviously helps with keeping them cool while in use. Now it's nice to see this as opposed to the transistors being mounted to the side of the case. As you may have noticed earlier, there is a rear mounted fan, which blows cool air into the casing. Now I find that this comes on pretty much every time I transmit, but it's not too loud to be an annoyance, in my opinion. So overall, this is not a bad little amplifier from the limited testing that I've performed. Now, I'm not sure how good it would be over time, but with that added benefit of overheating, overdriving, over output and over SWR protection, in theory, it should last some time. Now, as you can see in this video, I paired this with the Hermes Light 2. And if you're looking for an amp to go with your Hermes Light 2, then I guess this works okay. However, I have just taken delivery of a Hard Rock 50 amp with the ATU kit from Hobby PCB, which I will be pairing with my Hermes Light 2 shortly. Now it does come as a kit, so I'll be making a video series 
of building that Hard Rock 50 very soon. If that interests you, then don't forget to come back and check out those videos in the near future. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.